We've got a car going around a circular turn of radius 20 meters. If the coefficient of static friction is 0.9, what should be the speed limit around that turn? And this is kind of a vague question here, but we can at least uh, figure out what the maximum possible velocity is before we skid off the road. And then from that, we can decide what kind of speed limit we want to make. So here's, uh, let's write out what, what's given. So let's just draw a picture like we're in a, a helicopter looking down and here's a car uh, driving down the road and it's going to go around this turn like this <clears throat> and at least for this sector it's like it's like a quarter of a circle so you're in circular motion right through there and we're going to say that the radius of that is 20 meters and then the coefficient of friction between your uh, tires on the road is 0 0.9 0 it's a pretty good grip and uh, so what are we trying to find uh, well V max let's find the maximum speed and from that we can determine a speed limit so let's solve it let's start to solve right here well I'm going to redraw this and just say, okay, because uh, I want to show all the forces acting on the car. And I like to draw a, an oblique view of the car. So it's like, here's a circle, but we're kind of looking at it with some perspective. And here's a car going around that circle, you know, just like that. But of course, we're, we're going to, we come at it straight, and then we go around this turn, and then we come go around the turn like that. But so we've got gravity pulling us straight down towards the center of the earth and we've got a normal force <clears throat> and you can see that the normal force is just supporting our weight in this problem then we've got a force of friction now we i think you see a pattern here because we've done problems now on the last exam uh and so on where uh, you have a car and it is the force of friction between your wheels and the road that is the net force on your car. I mean, unless you have a jet pack on your car or you're towing your car, somebody's pushing on it, the force that makes your car accelerate or decelerate or turn is the force of friction. And hopefully, unless you're skidding, that friction is static friction. And uh, so this is the force of static friction. And if we want the maximum speed, we're, we want that maximum uh, static friction. And of course, we're going around a turn. Um, so if we sum the forces in the x direction, that will equal ma in the x direction. <clears throat> and we can make this the positive x and this the y. Now, why would I make positive x to the left? Well, because of the way I drew my free body diagram. I said that, uh, oh, friction's going this way. I know the direction of the acceleration is going to be in the direction of the net force. And so, uh, uh, just to make things easier, I make the positive x direction that way. That's what I usually do. And then uh, I say, okay, well, the force of friction is the only force uh, acting in the x direction on my car. And... <clears throat> And that's going to be equal to ma. And there is an acceleration. But what kind of acceleration doesn't change our speed, but does change our direction? That would be a centripetal acceleration. That is, the a here is centripetal. And it's equal to v squared over r. So you should know this. So now this uh, Newton's second law gives me the force of friction will be equal to mv squared over r. Okay, um, well this allows me to solve for the velocity. So the velocity, my maximum speed, will be equal to r times the force of friction divided by the mass of the car. You take the square root of that. Now you might think, wait a minute. Okay, we know r, but we don't know what the force of friction is. And we don't know what the mass is. So what do we do? Well, don't panic. That's the number one thing you do. Remember that the force of friction is equal to mu times the normal force. And what is the normal force in this problem? 
the force, the normal force is just supporting the weight of the car with no sine theta or anything like that. It's just a flat track. So the force of friction, we can say, is equal to mu. Well, the normal force is equal to the weight. And now we can plug that in, that expression in here. R times the force of friction, which is mu mg ah, divided by m. And what do we see happens to m, the mass of the car? It cancels out, which is why when you go around a turn, there's not different speed limits for different masses of car. If I drive my little Toyota Prius around a turn, it's going to be the same speed limit as my Honda Odyssey, which is a lot heavier. Or your, you know, if some of you have a big, you know, a, a Ford, uh, uh, you know, or a Lincoln Navigator or something like some big SUV, it's going to be the same speed limit. If you exceed that maximum speed, no matter what the mass of your car is, you will skid off the road. Well, now we can plug in our values. And this is 20 meters. Mu is um, 0.9. And G is 9.8 meters per second squared. Get out the calculator. <coughs> So I take the square root of 20 times 0.9 times 9.8, those parentheses equals, and you get 13.28 <clears throat> meters per second. Now, and since you know we live in America, right? Big old capital M, we don't use kilometers per hour, we're too good. So we're going to use miles per hour. And there is a, uh, a unit conversion. One uh, mile per hour is equal to 0.447 meters per second. So I'm going to do a unit conversion. Uh, one mile per hour is equal to 0 0.447 meters per second. <clears throat> and so the maximum possible velocity uh, see, divided by 0.447 is 29.7 miles per hour. Well, I put a box around that. Um, hey, uh, whenever you have meters per second and you want to say, what is that in miles per hour? Just double it and add a little tiny bit. See, double this and add a little, you get, that's about right. It's close, it's close. So, um, <clears throat> now let me ask you this. If you exceed this speed, what will happen to your car? You will skid off the road. So what should be the speed limit? If you are the, uh, if you, you're, you, you, you're a civil engineer and you're working for Caltrans and you are going to decide what the speed limit has got to be around that turn. 20 miles an hour. You'd say 20? 30. 30 miles an hour, you're fired. If you said 30, you're fired because, which is expected, Logan. All right, now, uh, because you're killing everybody. That would, it, I guess it would, or not killing, but I mean, everyone's going to crash. So, uh, so you, you would probably pick something lower. Now, this point nine, is that when the, when the road is dry? Probably. So you would need to investigate, uh, is this the coefficient of static friction when the road is wet? Like if it rains? Because uh, now if it is, then you're probably okay with 20 miles per hour as your, your turning, uh, as your uh, speed limit. But if, if, if it gets significantly lower, then well, you would have to find that. You would have to determine what that coefficient of friction is. And you would want to leave a safety factor. I would say, let's pretend that this is the lowest coefficient of friction you need to worry about for this road. 29.7 is uh, the maximum possible speed before skidding off. So you might want to make the speed limit 20 miles per hour. Because what do people do? 
they drive at the speed limit or a little bit faster. You should be, oh, I got a little, you know, I'll go a little faster than that. Um, my my uh, idiot uh, college roommate, uh, one of them, he used to say, oh, here's how I, fast I drive. I double the speed limit and, and, uh, and subtract 10 miles per hour from, or something like, I don't know, he had this ridiculous formula. Um, but look, uh, if, you, if you're right, doing the speed limit, you would actually want to make it significantly lower than that. You might want to cut it in half. You might want to say 15 miles per hour. And then if somebody takes it at double the speed, they'll, they might make it. Okay. So, so I guess what the speed limit is up to you. But that, those are decisions that real civil engineers make all the time. So here's the whole thing. Uh, any questions? Now, by the way, on the test, uh, getting this far is, is as far as you need to go. Yes? Any? Yes? I use different methods to get the same answer. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not surprised. Okay. That is all.